I'm going to show you how you can stream your history data and events from the Zabbix to your Home Assistant server. To do that, you're not going to need any third-party scripts or integrations. The only thing that you need is obviously the Home Assistant server and a Zabbix of the version at least 6.4 because exactly in that version, the native functionality of streaming events to external systems was added. I've also uploaded all the configuration files that we use in this tutorial to the GitHub page, link to which you can find in the description of this video. So let's get started. Started. And as you can see on my screen, I have an empty installation of the Zabbix server 6.4.10 and I have a almost empty uh, home assistant server. So both of these are installed through the Docker containers. You can click Docker PS and you can see it. Um, Zabbix is installed from the official Docker containers and for Home Assistant, I'm using the Docker Compose file, which is also uploaded to the same GitHub page. So before we configure everything in a Zabbix, we need to prepare our Home Assistant to actually accept the data that we're gonna stream with a Zabbix. And to do that, you need to edit the configuration file of your Home Assistant, which which uh, is stored in the configuration directory and usually is called the configuration.yaml. Um, as you can see, I've already have everything configured and basically the only part that is responsible to accept the data from the Zabbix is this one. So the rest command where we specify the URL on which the home assistant will be listening, then the method, content type and the actual payload that will be coming from the external system, which is Zabbix in our case. You probably could wonder like, but how do I know what the payload is? And uh, there's nothing difficult. The only thing that you need to do is open documentation of the Zabbix, which uh, explains how the streaming to external systems work. And you can find both examples. First of all, the payload for sending the history data. That's what I have in my example. And the second example of sending the events. So the only thing that will be different is a payload. And as you can see, like Zabbix server, group Zabbix server, the item tags, item ID, you need to replace all of these values with a variable like host host, groups, groups, item tags, item tags, and so on. So then when this is configured, and again, make sure that you specify the correct URL, it will not be the same for you just because remember I have the Zabbix and a home assistant running on the same virtual machine and in a Docker container. So the network setup is pretty crazy here. Um, then when this is done, you can go to your Zabbix, go to the administration section, general and connectors and create a new connector, which in my case is called stream to HA home assistant. And then you need to choose like, what are you exactly willing to stream? Whether those be item values or events. So if you want to stream both, I guess you just need to create uh, two uh, connectors and uh, probably you will also want to use a different URL for that. Maybe, well, IP address will remain the same in your home assistant setup, but you're probably going to want to use a different port. Tag filter and or. So this is the functionality that allows you to filter what data exactly do you want to send to your home assistant? Because imagining that you have like real production environment of the Zabbix with hundreds of thousands of hosts, probably not everything is meant for the home assistant. So you can use the tags to decide what exactly will go there. And as you can see, I have my tag, tag name platform equals uh, HA, which stands for Home Assistant. And if we go to my hosts, I have only one item, which let me do it like this, which has uh, tags or the tags, there we go, available memory in percentage tags platform equals HA. So in my example, I am sending only this item history data to my home assistant server. At this point, that's basically all the thing that you need to configure in a Zabbix itself. Of course, if you want to do some uh, HTTP authentication, you need to configure that as well. And you can can change how many concurrent session you want, what will be the timeout, maybe you want to use HTTP proxy, but all of that is not needed in my example is and not directly connected to the streaming itself. So to continue, again, we need to open a home assistant config file and do a couple of things like each of these things like automation, sensors, scripts, basically have their own 
folder that they must be into but uh, for the sake of simplicity just as i was testing around all of that is specified in the configuration file which is not a best practice but it works so i've also tried to so we receive the data in a home assistant and we need to create a sensor if we want to visualize the data and as i learned by trial and error it's not really possible to add value to the sensor from third party and the only thing to do that is use the input number. I may be wrong, I'm not so intelligent in a home, home assistant as, uh, as such, I'm just showing you how you can configure this to receive the data in a home assistant and then you decide how do you want to use it. So what we have here is autom automation where we are basically handling all the incoming metrics that are coming from this REST command. The platform is webhook, webhook ID receive metrics, and then what exactly we are doing when we receive the metrics. And in my example, I am using these metrics in two places. First of all, what I configured for the first just testing, I am sending the received metrics to the notifications of Home Assistant. It doesn't make any much sense um, in, in the real use case, but it was the easiest example for me to understand like how, uh, how and if what I've configured really works. And the second thing is uh, this sensor that I have in my dashboard. So we also have a two, uh, two scripts to do that. First one is set sensor template value which is exactly responsible to populate the value of my sensor to show it in the dashboard of the home assistant and a second one is just for the testing to uh, process the metric data which is going to um, notifications of my home assistant and as you can see it is not necessary to use all the values that we receive i am just using the json value for the sensor and host value and name for the notifications. So the script itself, just like in the automation, we have two parts. One is responsible for the notifications like process metric data, persistent notification create, we're creating a notification and the payload for the messages, I received the metric data, host and then the actual value that was received by the home assistant, item name and a value. However, for the second script where I just populate the sensor and remember I cannot populate the sensor value directly. So what I'm doing here, I am changing the value of input number with the script part and then in the sensor itself I am using the value from the input number and that is how you can get it up and running this is the way how you can show it in your home assistant uh, server if you want to do the same with events the only thing as I said you do is just uh, create either change this to support the events using the payload or just create a new one if you want to receive both the host uh, history data and also the events then it's absolutely up to you how you want to use it in your home assistant again i'm not a uh, too good professional and and i don't have much knowledge about it but uh, the task here is done to show you how you can receive the data from the zabbix so thank you for watching click subscribe and we'll see you later